When a fish is breathing like that, they are struggling to get adequate oxygen into their system. You do not treat for ammonia. That's the symptom, that's not the cause. A lot of discussion about the importance of air in, in, uh, in a natural tank. And this is a perfect example of that. See how he's breathing? That's heavy breathing. That's not a good sign. When a fish is breathing like that, they are struggling to get adequate oxygen into their system. Now, the reason that happened is because this airline got crimped. The temperature is elevated. We've got enough tannins and other material in here, probably some bacteria that are burning off oxygen. So this demonstrates to me that the oxygen level is down on this tank. Now, the tank is not overstocked, either with plants or with fish, but it's a brand new tank. It's only been set up a week, maybe two weeks. It hasn't achieved the a balance yet in all of the natural processes that occur to create a natural balance. I have lids on my tanks and that's why this happens. The lines get crimped. So what I try to do is put the line alongside like an electric wire from a heater that'll hold that that cap, that top, up off the airline. The tank has gotten a little cloudy and that happened essentially overnight. Last night, it was pretty much crystal clear. It may be that it happened because the airline was crimped, which allowed bacteria to begin to dominate and caused a depression in free oxygen. I don't know. That would tend to happen overnight if it happens. We're not in any trouble. The fish are swimming okay. Uh, they're still breathing heavily and they will probably for an hour, maybe half an hour. Uh, now that I've got a lot more air coming in here, it takes some time for that to saturate. You know, we're told all the time about the nitrate cycle. Well, that's one of about a hundred cycles that are critical to being able to maintain a tank. We don't even measure for most of them. It's not that it's not important, it is important. It's that it is, number one, a very simple thing to deal with. A lot of plants deal with it effectively. Number two, it's caused by not just a lack of plants, but overfeeding or overcrowding or both. If you are overcrowding your tank, you're probably overfeeding as well. Probably a more significant measurement than uh, ammonia is oxygen, yet we never measure for oxygen. Partly because the measurement for oxygen, the tool to do that, would be expensive. There is no simple, cheap, chemical way of testing for oxygen. So if you think of it this way, a test for ammonia, for example, doesn't tell you as much about ammonia as it tells you about the general condition of the tank. So if you have high ammonia, that means you've got other issues going on, issues that are contributing to ammonia being present. Uh, you have issues with the oxygen level. You have issues with the amount of plants in the tank. There may be overfeeding going on. The tank may be overstocked and fish producing more waste than the tank is able to, uh, to handle yet. So if you discover ammonia in your tank, you do not treat for ammonia. That's the symptom, that's not the cause. The cause of the problem could be any number of things. I've just listed a few. Now, I didn't measure for ammonia because I never measure for anything. I never measure for anything because I found that it runs me down rabbit holes that are not helpful. I can look at a tank and know if it's having a problem, and you can too. It doesn't take 
50 years of experience to be able to say that something is wrong or for that matter that something is right. It's a natural instinct. We know by looking, by smelling, by feeling, putting our hand in the water, by watching the fish through observation, checking to see if the water is wet, for example. That's very important. If your water is not wet, you have a serious problem. And there's a simple solution for that. It's called adding more water. So, in any case, use your awareness to learn and to understand what's happening in your aquarium. Don't get out the test kit and expect it's going to give you any answers. It may demonstrate that there's a problem, but keep in mind something with these test kits. They are extremely general. They are non-specific. They will give you a range and really a very wide range of results. For example, if it shows pink on the strip measuring among you, that could be almost anything. Those tests lack something very critical, and that is they lack accuracy. The only way to achieve accuracy in those tests is better quality, better made tools, testing tools such as laboratories use. When a laboratory tests pH, they may get a test of 6.4121212. When you test for ammonia or for pH, <clears throat> you get a test of 6.4. Well, that could be 6.0, it could be 5.8, it could be 4.3, it could be 8.0. You really have no way of knowing the test, the test material you're using is not capable of testing with any significant accuracy. Do not depend on them. They will lead you astray and they will lead you to do things that may very well not need to be done or even worse, may be counterproductive, may give you the very opposite result you need. Now the electronic ones are better. They're actually significantly better because they don't measure a chemical process. They actually measure the electric ma electromagnetic impulse that's in the water. That gives you a far more accurate, but even so, these are cheap tools. This is uh, something that costs about a buck to make, not $500 to manufacture. So you're not going to get the accuracy with it. All that is to say is that your observation skills are better and more important and more valuable in maintaining the health and quality of that tank than any test kit is. So observation. I've got the airline going now. The fish, I'm watching them breathe. They're gasping and then they'll stop. That's a sign that they're beginning to get more oxygen into their system so they're not constantly gasping. They are still trying to get more oxygen in, but they're more balanced, they've got more in. They're able to stop doing that for a few seconds, maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then start gasping again. After a while, they'll level out and you won't even see them breathing. Any of the fish that we have in our freshwater tanks, you should never see the fish actively gasping for air. They should have enough in their system from the natural environment in the uh, tank to be able to maintain a high enough level of oxygen in their bodies that they don't need to gasp for it. Think of it as breathing, as you're breathing. One of the times when you gasp for air. One is, of course, when you've been exercising very heavily. And you're trying to replace that oxygen that's being burned off. But another is when you're in a room or an area that is low in oxygen. That doesn't happen to us very often, but it does happen and it's good to understand that because it happens much more frequently in an aquarium. It's probably the most common cause 
of fish death is lack of oxygen. It's important to be smart when you're maintaining aquariums. You can't do it dumb. Doing it dumb kills fish. Dumb kills fish. Smart keeps fish alive. It's up to you. It's up to your brain, to your ability to perceive, to your ability to, to act in ways that are, that are, uh, that are going to be helpful or beneficial. So we'll get back to them. We'll keep an eye on this today and make sure that they start breathing normally, that the water begins to clear, uh, and that that airline keeps, keeps working. Very good.